Finzi was one of these amazing composers. Do we know much about him now? Probably not. This is probably one of his most famous pieces, and aren't we lucky to have such a piece? Uh, of course, he was at, at the time of Britain, Walton, Vaughan Williams. They were all, you know, obviously huge names in British music, and Finzi uh, really was uh, sort of a, a quiet, you know, standing in the wings, waiting his turn, so to speak. So uh, he wrote this clarinet concerto, which really firmly put him on the map. And um, it's three movements, and the, the beauty about it, it's, it's actually with just strings, clarinet and strings, and makes a perfect combination uh, sound world. You know, the clarinet, um, it of course, is a very powerful instrument, but so if you just have strings as a cushion, as, as the backing, as it were, you don't have to force. So what you get is this very creamy, very velvety concerto. And um, I actually got to know the, the wife of Gerald Finzi, and she told me that she found out long after her husband had died that he wrote the second movement, uh, which is very, very uh, deep, an emotional piece. He wrote it um, when he found out he was dying of leukemia, and he didn't tell the family, uh, he kept it to himself. And so this, this movement has a very deep meaning to it uh, altogether. And there's an interval which occurs throughout the whole movement, which is to represent his sadness um, of, of dying of leukemia. So when it comes to the last movement, he kind of throws everything out of the window and says, well, come on, let's get on with life and, and enjoy it. <laughs> One of the hardest things with this piece is to make it sound simple. Um, it may sound simple, but actually uh, the difficulty lies in, in playing legato, the smooth lines, to make it go from one register to another as smooth as possible. So, you know... So we're going from one register into another register and we have to play really, really smooth. And, uh, and actually that's not an easy thing on the clarinet because you're you know, going from one you know, into another part of the instrument which requires more breath. So you've got to do all this sort of in one melody and make it sound very, very simple. I play the recorder like so many other kids and I'd had a dabble at the violin and the cello, but I didn't really get on with them. So this, the clarinet was sort of waiting for me somehow. I used to go to the, well, what do they call them? Sir Robert Mayer concerts at the Royal Festival Hall as a child. Um, we had a very musical headmistress in the primary school and she used to take a group of us uh, to the Royal Festival Hall on a Saturday morning. And I heard the London Symphony Orchestra play and they were playing Rimsky, Korsakov, Scheherazade. And when it came to the clarinet cadenza, <laughs> I suddenly spouted out, that's the instrument I want to play. So when I was about 10, uh, there was a sort of Youth Makes Music, it was called, concert. And uh, I was lucky enough, well, to, I was asked to play anyway, a solo. So can you imagine at the age of 10 playing a Brahms sonata in the Royal Festival Hall in front of 3,000 people? Um, that will, that kind of changed my life. Um, the moment I left the platform, I said, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> it's very special. Because the clarinet is a relatively, well, it's a newcomer to the musical scene in terms you know, of age. I mean, it's a, it's a young instrument compared to a violin, piano, or, or even flute and oboe. So we do lack repertoire solo repertoire in that department. We've got the Mozart clarinet concerto, Weber concertos, and after that, you know, the classical era, there's very little. Very, in the romantic repertoire, I mean, Brahms didn't write a concerto, Beethoven didn't write a concerto, Chopin didn't, so there's very little. Where we do excel is in the 20th century. That's when a lot of composers started writing, Copeland, Nielsen, and I, f I find it's part of my job, if you like, to um, enhance the clarinet repertoire and ask as many composers as I can to write great works for the clarinet.
there's a piece um, by the famous American composer John Adams, and he wrote a concerto for me called Gnarly Buttons. And it's a concerto in three movements, and it has an in interesting instrumental ensemble surrounding the clarinet. And the last movement um, he wrote when he's actually when his father was dying. <laughs> so it's, it's all about death, isn't it, clarinet? And um, it's called Put Your Loving Arms Around Me, and it's just got a beautiful, very simple melody. <laughs> I'm often asked the question, what's your favourite piece of music? Oh, I don't know. And my answer, it's my bog standard answer is, well, my favourite piece of music is actually the piece I'm playing at that moment. And it's the same whether it's contemporary music, romantic music, classical music, uh, whatever I'm playing at that moment, I try to give 100%, and that's um, my... <laughs> I think that's my, the way I keep going and the way I enjoy music.